Make ready. Fire! Dry swab. Handle charge. Load charge. Ram charge. Pick and prime. Make ready. Fire. I'm Captain Brian Mitchell, 2nd U.S. Light Artillery. I'll talk to you a little bit about our uniforms. Our hat's called a Shaco. You notice the, the hat's kind of tall. That's to make us look bigger than we actually are to try to scare the enemy to make them think that we're larger than they are. We all have the same plume on our hat, this red piece called the plume. That signifies that we are all with the same artillery crew. So the commander of the battle, who's off somewhere hopefully in a safe place, can look down up on us and say, okay, that's the red plume I know, that's the second U.S. Light Artillery. If he's got another artillery crew there, their plume may be all white or maybe red and white or even some with yellow so he knows he can recognize those different groups, uh, those different artillery crews from their plume. Now you'll notice Private Epley over here does not have a sash or an epaulette. That's the lowest rank private. The private and First Sergeant Foy have the yellow bars on their uniform. The yellow signifies artillery. If that bar was white, that would mean they're from an infantry group, which is the guys with the muskets or the long guns. Sergeant Foy and I both have the sash, signifies us as being an officer. Sergeant Foy has two epaulets that are yellow. That signifies him being a sergeant. I have one epaulette Right shoulder signifies that I'm a captain, but my epaulette and the braid on my hat are gold rather than yellow, so I'm recognized as an officer. People hear 2nd U.S. Light Artillery, and then they say we've, we have this cannon, so artillery means big gun. That's what, what it actually means, big gun, and the, the artillery crew is the people handling the big gun. So cannon is the big gun. There, there's three types of cannon. There's the mortar, which is a little short, usually a, a really small short one that fires a projectile at a very sharp trajectory. The idea of that is to go up over the wall of the fort and land inside of the fort. A howitzer is very similar to this but with a really short barrel. And when you load the howitzer, it has a special chamber inside of the barrel back at the breech for the powder charge and then the projectile would be quite a bit larger and it would go in front of that powder charge. This, the final one, is just a big gun. It's made to, you can see the barrels longer, some of them are a lot bigger than this. They're made to actually aim at a target or in the vicinity of a target because it will shoot farther than we could actually see. So we don't always see what we're shooting at. The commander would decide on our target and send a message to us what our target is. And then our crew is obviously more than three people. So we have guys that are figuring out what angle to 
we've, we've practiced enough that we know what angle to set it at if we want to shoot 50 yards, it's not a very steep trajectory. If we want to shoot 600 yards, it's a steeper trajectory and a little more gunpowder. Clear the vent. We clean the vent, make sure we keep it open so the next time we go to fire the gun, we know it's going to fire. Cover vent. By covering the vent, you create a vacuum in that barrel when you're using the swabs. And fire or spark cannot live in a vacuum. Search a piece. Now he's checking to make sure there's nothing left of the canvas bag and hopefully no sparks. And as you can see, the end of the rod looks like a worm and it's pointed to grab a hold of anything that's in the barrel. Wet swab. Now we're going to wet it down to make sure there's no sparks in there. We don't want that charge going off before we want it to when we put the next one in. Dry swab. Now we're going to dry the barrel out so the next charge does not get wet. Handle charge. Load charge. Ram charge. Now you're, you're shoving the, the charge back against the breech. Make sure it's back tight. Pick and prime. He's using a brass wire which has been ground to a point on the end. We use brass because of no sparks. Now he's going to prime it, which is a goose quill with black powder in it. That's what we use to set it off. Make ready. This is slow fuse. It's cotton rope with gunpowder and water mixed up and soaked in it and that's what we use to set it off. Fire!